on, come on. This money has been glorious. If you are blessed, put your hands together for Jesus. I know you can do better than this one. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this money. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. What a glorious God we said. What a mighty God we said. Lord, if it has not been your grace, it has not been your mercy, where will we have been? This morning we bring praise, dominion, power to you. And we say you alone deserve all. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together one more time. Amen. Last week I started a, a, a series. I want to continue today We're talking about me being a vessel of honor. Amen. Our main scripture is Second Timothy chapter 2. We read from verse 1. And I want you to project the same scripture for me as we read. I want you to project the same scripture for me. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Are you projecting it for me? Second Timothy. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good. Is it there? We know that it's a common scripture. We know the verse 15 so well. But let's look at it again. Second Timothy chapter 2. And in this, the background of this particular scripture is talking about uh, the apostle of God, the apostle Paul, uh, uh, encouraging Timothy and admonishing him to take certain steps. And the fact that he was teaching him or telling him about false teachers that have risen in the church. And he was talking about the kind of things they were doing. And the fact that his son should not be moved by those things at all. And he was telling him uh, about how creature has spoken, how prophet has spoken about the end time. The fact that there's going to be a lot of false teachers in the body of Christ. But our focus was not on that particular background. Our focus is on the verse. Uh, uh, we'll look at the verse number 20. And it tells us about a house, referring the church as the house. And the verse number 20 is saying that, But in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself, and this is the next verse so important. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, satisfied, and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto good works. Amen. And I'm, I was asking a question last week, that which one do you choose? Do you want to be a vessel of honor or a dishonor? I went on to say that, vessels of Hannah or those who are chosen for greater works fight a lot of battles in life but it is different and I was saying that the reason why you cannot do the things others are doing is because you are unique amen the reason why others can fool around and they still survive but you cannot do it is because you are not them you are you <laughs> and you are so unique in your form and that is why what it will take a person to get in a minute it will take you months to get the kingdom of darkness recognizes your powers and authorities and therefore if you fall under the power of God and you carry destiny and you carry great mantle what happens is that the enemy will make sure he frustrates your manifestation and that is the reason why you cannot be any other person than yourself anything that carry power has challenges I might speak to somebody. The reason why the enemy is fighting your life is because you carry destinies that will affect nations. Because you carry something that when you, when you surface, people, generation after generation, will benefit from it. And that is why the enemy will come after you. But thank God for Jesus, who has made intercession for us and has separated us and consecrated us unto good works. And therefore, no matter what you face in life, see yourself that it is a sign, it is a springboard for greater works ahead. Now, in this scripture, Paul is trying to 
put, I mean, he, he's talking about segments. He, he's talking about three dimensions of personalities or, 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 or elements. He said gold, silver, and wood. And in this particular context, he's referring the gold to people who are of a good use. People who have touched themselves. Am I speaking to somebody here? Look at the verse 22, the 21. It said, but for those who purge themselves, they purge themselves unto good works. They will be used for good works. The reason why you cannot go on the market and mess up yourself and do things the worldly people are doing is because you are supposed to be someone that has been purged unto good works. Hello? The verse 21, I want to read it again. The verse 21, it said, if a man therefore so the condition here is an open statement. It means you can choose any of them. But the condition here is that if a man therefore purge himself from these, and what are the these the Bible is talking about? These is not the silver and the gold we are talking about. These means there are statements or there are outlines that a man must purge himself out from. And you and I as Christians, we know that number one, when God, the Bible talks about this, it's talking about in summary, the things that do not qualify one to become righteous person. Hello? If it talks about this, it's talking about the fact that there are certain things that can cause you not to be, uh, I mean, a vessel of honor to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And these, the outline follow in verse 22. Look at it. Flee all, I mean, okay, let me read from verse 21. It says, for if a man purges himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, satisfy and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto every good way. Verse 22. Flee youthful lust, but follow righteousness. And please, when he mentioned youthful lust, last, it doesn't mean, okay, then if I'm not a youth, I'll pass youth, I cannot. I, listen, the slave queens are not after the young men. They know the young men don't carry anything. They're after the old ones. Now, youthful last because it takes strength. So please, when the Bible talk about flee youthful last, it, the Bible is qualifying the kind of last you should flee. Youthful last because it takes some, some strength of a youth to last after women. It takes some, some vigor. It, it means when a man is after a woman, there is that thing that vibrates to you. That you don't, you are, not, you are so shameful that you don't care where the thing is happening. That, that, that vibration <laughs> is what the Bible is qualifying as a youthful, because it takes you, I mean, a, a strength of the you to go to that dimension of vibration, to get to that dimension of vibration. I watched a, a, a movie, a short by uh, um, a Christian body in uh, Nigeria. They do Christian movies about, about a young man who God has blessed. When he was poor, he was going to church, doing everything, praying. We say chain prayer is there, 24 hour prayer, breaking yokes, he's there, everything. When he got the position he wants, or he wanted as a, as a manager, good money, he decided to say bye bye to God and join the world. And when God gave him the privilege to sit over the big seat, he looks at the shape of the women who are applying for a job. He said, this taste will be good. This shape will be wonderful. And they're conditioned to give you a job unless he sleeps with you. And he managed to get some of the few young ones who have those things and, and felt that they are so anxious for, 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 for jobs. But there came this lady who believed that if you really want to be a vessel of honor, you must flee Useful last and has read this scripture and believed that God is the one that can help him. Hey, came before this man, and this man for the first time did he couldn't succeed because he was jobbing and saying all the things. And the lady said, No, I didn't come with my seed. God gave him her wisdom, and he said, Okay, I will come the next day. So this lady, who is also not raised from a uh, 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 La Palm Royal or East Legon or where, also from between Labadi and Nima where I was raised and have sense, decided that Charlie, let me set this man up, brought her, her junior brother with cameras and all those, not BB1 uh, um, assets to, to uh, and she, she decided I'm trying to define what youthful last is so you get it clear 
she decided that okay i will set the pace and actually i will i will i will activate the senses and the desire of this man so strong that she will, i mean i will lure him the power of a woman i will lure him out of the office because if i scream you say i didn't do anything but i will bring him out to a place that he cannot control himself be afraid you have to be afraid why are young men here be afraid of women so he he activated everything and come and see this man who was on youthful vibration. In fact, the zeal of the youth was upon him. And he was vibrating. The girl said, Okay, let me do that. The girl will turn the back, smooch a little, and say, Remove your trouser here. Let's so let's move out. Let's move out. This place is too hot. The AC is on. I said, No, no, no. And and I'm talking about a man who has grown but has lost his senses so far as his concern. And there are a lot of people who can come under that spell that they cannot control themselves. I managed to pull this man. He said, let's go to the kitchen area where the st all staff eats and you have to do it there because I, I want a new star. I don't want this old one this star. And managed to get the man to the kitchen space and whilst they are in the middle, he has released all the things of the man. He has removed everything. And the man was standing as the creator. Of course, this creature is a, is a creator of God with a foolish uh, structure, you know, because God will not create to disgrace him. You know, he was standing there naked, and the guy, the lady said, Let's bring some of the staff who have their food here to come and eat at this time. So they came, and whilst they entered, they saw their boss naked. And the woman is saying, that, how many of you have fought victim to this foolish creature standing here? And they were looking at them and said, you, you, I came here with you the last time. I know you have fought victim. They started crying. Why? That same day, the owner of the company was called. And he said, I raise you because I had God for me to help you. But you couldn't survive because of this foolish, youthful last. Today is your end. And he was sacked and the lady was asked to take his place. What am I trying to tell you? There are times you find yourself in situations where you want to compromise. There are times you find yourself in situations where, I, oh, Charlie, just this papa pa, pa, one. That, but this young woman decided that in the Lord's house, I want to be a vessel of honor, not a vessel of wood. I will give you an explanation of those three verses today. And I tell you, you don't need to fall victim no matter what. Am I speaking to somebody here? Now, this vessel, three vessels the Lord mentioned. First of all, he mentioned uh, uh, the, the vessel of gold. Three, the vessel of gold. Now, here, God is referring us, or uh, human being, as a fair standard of gold. It means that, you know, if you are a vessel of gold, it means your standing with God is, is unique. If you are a vessel of gold, it means your worth and value. Or let me put it this way. You are, you are worthy and you have value in the sight of God. Whenever you are referred as a, as, a, as a vessel of gold, what it means that you are of value and you stand right in the sight of God. And that is why Joseph was made the prime minister. That is why Joseph took a higher seat and the king can remove his seal of authority and said, you are trustworthy. What it means that being a vessel of honor means that you are trustworthy in the presence of God. God can trust you so far as righteousness is concerned. Listen to me, we are all not perfect, but as you strive unto righteousness, you become a vessel of honor. I pray that wherever you are and striving to become righteous means that you don't need to compromise no matter what you are facing. You don't need to add zeros though you, need, you lack money. You don't need to do things that will be contrary to somebody who should be a vessel of honor. What do we see in the church today? We have people who call themselves Christians but they are combining I mean, I mean worldly life to Christian life. They are combining all sorts of things and they still believe that God is there for them. Yes, he will not kill you because he is a man, he's a God of mercy. But what will make you a vessel of honor for many to run to you and become a blessing to you, they will not come. 
I was telling you last week, the reason why most of us, our prayers are not answered, not because God hates us, because you are, not, you are not a vessel of honor, but you are a vessel of dishonor. Why? Because you are combining the things of this world and say, our oh, pastors who meet and they drink, and no pastors who meet, and so this one there is just a red wine. They say it's good for your body, your blood cells will grow very well. And you know that what they are drinking is more than 7%. And they still tell you it's normal. Please, you can debate me on the earth, but my Bible tells me it is not. It said, if you will drink, just rather be filled with the Spirit of God. I will choose the Spirit of God than telling me my, when I drink 1%, it is good for my heart. Please, you may have your stand, but where I'm also standing is that I prefer to be filled with the Holy Ghost than to fill my body with alcohol. And our people, I mean, I mean, you say, you as I read the story about big pastors we follow, some of you follow, big pastors who have a joint in the clubhouse, and after they have finished their day work called the work of God, and they are sweat, they are, they are, they are, they are tired, and they are sweaty, and they, are, they have a place they rejuvenate, and the rejuvenation is that they bring them nice girls with big hands and all that, just to massage them and have fun, and that is their kind of rejuvenation. That is their kind of rejuvenation. What kind of spirit is that? I tell you, God is far away from them. We have compromised and we expect grace to speak for us. No, oh, God knows that I am weak. God knows that when he created me, I have this weakness. I can't stand women at all. I, can, I, I have a son who is delivered. This guy, when the woman shakes him, you can see virtually he's shaking. When he holds the hand, he holds the hand of the woman, for five minutes he cannot move. You can see, I say, hey, what kind of this one? He came to me and said, Papa, this is my sickness. I say, if this is your sickness, not God, I ban you from shaking women. And he can tell you which hand is softer, which hand got him, which hand, I say, hey, you, you, you can't be around you for one hour. You better start. I say, I ban you from today. There are other men, when they watch women, they, are, they, are, they cannot control their senses. They can give everything until they come back to their senses. They are men like that. When they see fresh girls, oh, how are you? And they touch them, hmm, give me 100 million. He will give the 100 million foolishly before he realizes, what have I done? Where is my money? What am I trying to tell you? God is telling you and I. No, 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 and I'll take it more further. I've been a useful last. When you talk about useful last, it's not only fornication, but the desire of the flesh that leads you into areas that will not allow God to fill your life. That will not allow God to finish what he wants to do with your life. So, youthful last actually is not only fornication but that is the main key because for that matter, God has to create women. If not for that, God will not create women. Adam was suffering. Adam was suffering. God saw it and said, I'll make you a helpmate. Am I speaking to <laughs> No, no. Am I preaching here? I don't like this at all. I'm not telling the story. I am telling you the truth. And God said, let me make even that after God created Adam, Adam gave birth. The thing was landing through. A man can have a woman and will still behold the last of the hope will be, be seeing another woman and thinking that the one that he has is a stick. It's not a stick. That is the spirit of Adam. Last youthful last. Free youthful last. And he said, but follow righteousness. Righteousness means something that is right before God. Hello. I know people say, Papa, I follow right. I've been righteous. I didn't sin. The last time I messed up was three, uh, ten years ago, five years ago. I've done my tithing. Why is it so that I still not benefit from anything? Please, it's not that you are not benefiting. Yes, you are living right, but there's something still holding your heart. Hello? Somebody can do everything fine, but if bitterness is in your heart, it's a limitation. Righteousness go beyond coming to church. Righteousness go beyond praying and studying your Bible. Righteousness is the daily practice that commits you to always hang up with God. Hang on with God. Hang on with God. Righteousness is a daily practice. Not only studying your Bible. Not only praying for, for I mean, as a religious thing. But you, you act what you pray. You practice what you pray. You practice what you study. And as you practice them, day and day, it can reflect in your life for men to see this is the righteousness of God. The first church in Antioch was called the church because the Bible says when the people saw the action of the people and saw the way they lived their life, they said these are the Christians. These are the call out ones. These are the separated ones. So if God is saying you have to be a vessel of honor, there must be an action or there must be a practical action from you that men can look and say yes, this is indeed the hand of God upon this. This is indeed a righteous person. But 
But Christians of today, what do we see? There's a combination of a little world, combination of righteousness. Please, when it comes to the things of God, there's no compromise. I'm asking to somebody here. When it comes to the things of God, there's no compromise. There is no com- If there is compromise, Joseph would have finished the wife of Potiphar and cleaned them off. And even from this day, he would have chopped the best food that Potiphar is shopping. He would have, he would have enjoyed the food that is prepared for. You know, in, in the custom, in, the, in, in those days, in those customs, slaves eat the food of their master. You dare not. But, but I believe if Joseph has compromised the food that the wife of Potiphar gives to Potiphar, he will have served Joseph a better one. But you see, that will be a desire of the flesh. That will be that desire we are talking about here. It will give you earthly satisfy, satisfaction, but God would have denied Joseph. I'm not speaking to somebody here. But Joseph saw all this, and when the trap came, nobody was in the household. The servant, and all, the Bible says the woman sent all of them out. There was nobody there. It was Joseph and the, and the, and the wife of Potiphar. That is a wonderful advantage for a young pastor of today. That would have been, I mean, it would have been a wonderful one, Macarius. Ah, there's nobody there. Richard, there should have been, that day, it would be a wonderful one. Noah, you are looking at me like that. It would be a wonderful one. Even with your technology, I think you would have locked all the doors with technology. It would have been a wonderful one. Because nobody there. I use my iPhone. Like you use your iPhone, even you will lock every door and every window. Nobody will hear you. You would have taken that advantage. But for Joseph, he said, no, 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 no. My covenant with God go beyond secrecy. It go beyond closed door. It is something in my heart. It is something about my body. It is something that I have covenanted. And the covenant came through my fathers and not me. I will not give myself up. And the Bible says he pushed the woman and ran away out of the house. What, what happened? Judgment came, but later he was a vessel of honor and God manifested his goodness. I pray in the name of Jesus that no matter what you go through, may you never compromise. No matter what you go through, may you never compromise. So you become a vessel of honor. I tell you, God will visit you in short time. I see a miracle coming to somebody because you didn't compromise and you are a vessel of honor. God will honor you. Why did the Bible use gold? The Bible used gold because gold goes through refinery. There is no great man, there is no great woman who will never go through a family. For you to become great, you go through the fire. Your life will go through the fire. Your finances will go through the fire. Anything you do will go through the fire until you have burned and burned and you can't burn again. My beer until until be beer and miss you. Then God can say, hey, out of the ashes, I will raise a giant. Out of the ashes, I will raise a giant. And that is what happened to Joseph. I pray that in this house, you will be a vessel of honor and not a vessel of wood. A vessel of gold are people who have strived to become righteous. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And the Bible says, he said, there is also a vessel of wood. Vessel of wood. These are people, the dry people in the church who are destitute of God's grace. The dry people in the church who lack the grace of God upon their life. This is what Paul is talking about. They are vessel of wood. And these are people the devil can easily use. Hello? Ah. Hello? Ah. These are people, they are in church, oh, but they have made themselves available for the use of the devil. Who is a vessel of wood here? Who is a vessel of wood? Show me somebody who is a vessel of wood, and I'll tell you the end of that person. The vessel of wood are people who are who are who are who are dry. They are dry wood. They are dry of the grace of God. And, and they are available for the use of the devil. I mean, one of the fathers of land was talking and said they, was, they were trying to do a project and he has prayed and God has told him that today somebody will be touched. Somebody, God said he has sent somebody to come and be a help. That specific need, the need, that particular need, God said, I have sent somebody. Rest assured. He came to the church and after he has shared the vision, 
the same vision he said, and it was offering time. God laid on a, woman's, uh, to, a woman to get her from the crowd to come and give that amount. When the woman was about to get up, and then the lady, the person sitting close to me saw the woman removing, I mean, dollars, and there's a, ch a check. And he asked the woman, are you, to, are you coming to give all this as an offering? Hey, master. And the woman said, what are you talking about? God has instructed me. So, because she was talking too much, the woman didn't get up again. But God was still impressing on the woman to give. So, do you know what? The Bible says, uh, the, Bible, uh, the, the, the story that I know, the woman, the woman got up and decided that after church, he will go direct and give the money. This is a true story. I'll mention the name of the, the, the papa I'm talking about because it's very close. So, the woman took the money after service. He said, Papa, God asked me to come and give you this money. And it has been four days God has been laying on my heart to come and give because God said you need it. And when the woman gave the money, the exact money he needed to do part of the building, the trench and uh, what do you call it, the, the, the same amount the woman gave to. So, after the woman gave the number and uh, the money and they were talking, then the woman confessed that, ah, Papa, when I was coming to give, somebody stopped me. I nearly took the money away. When he got there, who stop you? And then collected. The following Sunday, it was serious. He fired. Whoever has been sent among the crowd, stopping people. If I say, the, if I speak the language, the tongue, you will get the person. So let me keep quiet. If you know you are here, don't come to my church. Locate another church. I forbid. I reject you. I forbid you. Get out. If you are here, get out. Get out. I fire, 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 fire. They are vessels of wood. You will now, you not now avail yourself. Somebody is availing yourself. You are talking. You will not do anything in the house of God. Somebody has availed himself himself. And you, you, are com you are comparing people and condemning. Who are you? You are a vessel of wood. Ask somebody sitting close to you. Uh, please, are you a vessel of wood? Or a vessel? No, it's not an insult to. I asked for a projection of the scripture. The scripture never came. Just, oh, okay. You have your Bible. Verse 21. Ver, okay, verse 20. Second, yeah, let's all read. And then we can ask our question. Let's all read. You have it. Okay. Verse 20. Verse 20. Are you there? Okay, let's all read. Ready, go. On your phone. Ready, go. Okay, the 20 is on the screen. Okay, can we all read? Ready, go. Uh-huh. 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 Okay. When we come to clay, that one there, you ask the question, the person will run away. Next week, I'll deal with the clay. Amen. Remember, we are starting our five days, uh, four Sundays of ending where it's going to be serious prayer from next week. Serious manifestations here. Take note of it. Take note of it. Take note of it. Now ask the question, are you a vessel of wood or a vessel of gold? Ask the person, what is he saying? Demand an answer. Oh, I didn't say, say it friendly. Ask the person, are you a vessel of gold or a vessel of wood? I just gave you a definition of wood. Okay, let me give you. The definition of wood are those that are dry of the grace of God and the devil can use them as a vessel, though they are in the church. So coming to church is not enough. Coming to church and dancing and clapping your hands is not enough. When you come to the house of God, you must be a vessel that the Lord can use. So let me tell you, maybe indirectly you may not know, but can I shock you by the word of God? So if God is saying, in my house, there are vessels of gold, silver, and wood. And he has given definition that those who are of gold and of silver, they are people who will avail themselves and they follow righteousness and they, they use the, them, themselves or they will do something. They work for God and they use all they have to do. So if you are in the hands of God and you don't do anything, where do you belong? I'm making it simple. Oh, hello. No, no. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, I'm, are you getting what I'm saying? The vessel of gold... The Bible says, they are unto righteousness. Hello? Ah. 
Now, when you bring righteousness in the content of the, the context of the church, and this one we are talking about outside, we are talking about the house of God. So if you say they are a vessel of honor and they are in the church and they desire righteousness and they go after righteousness, there is nobody who can say I'm a lover of God and I'm righteous who will come to church and will not do anything or will not see the desire to support the kingdom business. Anybody who says I'm a vessel of honor, a vessel of gold, you are desperate for the things of God. Hello? You are desperate for the things of God. Yes. So you are a broadcaster. You come to church. We need announce, announcers. You said oh, my people don't speak good English or the English is raw, raw. You are sitting there con- con- complaining. What are you using your broadcasting anointing for? You are in church. You sing better. You say my people are not anointed. You will understand. What are you using your anointing for? You are in church. You are a bank manager or you are a manager of a company. Using your strategies and everything to manage and you are paid at the end of the month. You come to test everything about yourself. What are you using your managerial skills to do? Hey guy, you have left my house in rain and you are building mansions for yourself. Vessel of honor will always make sure whatever talent God has given me, I use it in his house. Whatever God has given me, I use it to his glory. I pray for somebody this morning. That you will not just be in the house of God warming, uh, uh, warming the pills, but you will be a vessel of honor that you will spend your time doing something for God. You will spend your time doing something for God. We'll be announcing evangelism, evangelism. I know the faces who go to evangelism. What are you doing for God? Many of us are in church. We have nothing. We don't have any currency in our account. Too. We don't have any saving in our spiritual account. You know when you are, you are home, or you have an accident, or a son or somebody has asked, they rush you to call you, they will ask whether any of you have donated blood before. When your wife is going to deliver, you know you buy blood, and they will ask you, do you, have, you have you donated blood before? Because if you donate blood, they give you code. So if you are, if you are a donor of, of blood, they will by all means say, okay, because you are, we will give your wife. And for your information, anytime you pray to God for a miracle or for a breakthrough, your file is pulled and God asks questions. Who is this one? What has he done in my kingdom? And for the grace through Christ, most of the time, mercy speak for you because you are nothing. But for your information, Paul wrote in Romans 6, he said, should we continue mercy now so that grace will abound? So there is a limit of grace. You see, now let me tell you, we are in the end time, you know that. We are in the elastic limit. Elastic limit. I'm not teaching science here. But you see, the thing has stretched. Grace has been stretched ah, to a point that the, the power of grace is, is not, it's not weighty anymore. It means when you are driving and you see your car giving you yellow sign, that red sign, it means you are driving on, on, on the less, the small fuel that entered in a chamber. That it will go very soon. So if you are not careful, many of us, that's why many are called. They die and go and there's nothing in their account. Many of us, we are not dying, but grace has finished. You are on, on the elastic limit. And if you don't do anything about it, very soon you have nothing to show. You must be a vessel of honor and not of dishonor. Next week, you will see what clay means. The clay people, they are the people who will not do anything. Ama, 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 ama. They are at one place. They are at one place. You know, when you, when you chew gum for a lot and you stick it somewhere, it becomes sticky that you can't use your ordinary hand to do when it's the things. You know, you put something so. Many of us are clay who are stuck in the church. You are stuck. You are not moving. You are not melting. And you have become a hindrance to many people who want to come into the church. Clay, we will see next week. There are the people say, You are not a vessel of honor. You are, you are a hindrance to many. So you are sticking there and you are becoming a heel. A heel. Uh, uh, that, those ants, your friends say, eh? 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 Those ants, your friends say, The ants, those red, they can. They have a name they call them. When, when, when they stick you, eh? eh? Charles Taylor. I, I don't even wonder how they gave them Charles Taylor. How can men be so wicked? It's Charles Taylor so wicked that you can tell them. <laughs> sure. Many are clay. Next week we will look at clay. Rise up on your feet. Next week we will look at clay. You want to pray this morning. You want to pray this morning. You want to pray this morning. That Lord, use me 
and make me a vessel of honor. I don't want to be a wood. Who wants to be a wood here? Wood, and wood, I can hold, I can hold coming. Wood, I can hold coming. You, you should not be in the, in the, in the, you want to pray today. The Lord, help me follow righteousness. Things that will please you, that I will be a vessel unto honor. A vessel of honor. That when I find myself in your house, I will see myself being of a good use. Open your mouth and begin to pray this prayer right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I will be a vessel unto good use. A vessel unto good use. A vessel unto good use. Open your mouth. The Lord will use you. Because you, you, don't, you, want, you don't want to be a vessel of honor. You don't want to be a vessel that will have no meaning. A vessel that is useless. You don't want to be. Mako Talibarabas. Brantala bada brandas. Recopala da balagadas. A vessel of hand, a vessel of gold are those who 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 are separated unto righteousness. Those who use their giftings in the house of God. They see the reasons why God has given them different giftings. And they believe that we have to use it to the glory of God. Pray, they live in purity. They walk in righteousness. They walk in the doctrines of God. The, I mean, vessel of honor are vessels that want to see to it that the kingdom of God is exalted. There are people that want to see to it that the house of God is built. They, they are the people who want to see to it that nobody lacks in the house of God. They want to see that the house of God has abandoned for the expansion of the kingdom. You want to pray that Lord, make me a vessel of honor. A vessel of honor. A vessel of honor. A vessel that will glorify you. A vessel that will see the need of worshiping you. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Karunele bakusa te baranda. Rendo kapariando si prakista. E kuparina. E basura. E kuata. E kusanta. E barika. E zota. E ki baraka supa. Riko paria. Zopriya nazia. E kuata zibra. Nala bakusa. In the name of Jesus. When you become a vessel of honor, it means you can finish well. It means you can end well. I'm asking you somebody, if you have a covenant with your father and you know definitely your father will come through, whilst others are worried, why is your father not coming? You believe your father will come through for you. It doesn't matter whether January was bad. I tell you, your father will come through for you December. You will end well. Lift up your hands and Lord, I want to be a vessel of honor. As you use me in your house, help me to end very well. In these few months, I want to live righteous for you. I want to walk in holiness. I want to walk in your will. That whatever is, is pending my miracle, in this month of December, I will end well. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The Lord, I know you are a miracle working God. In these few weeks to end the year, I pray, make me a vessel of honor. As I separate myself unto you and I do the things of the righteous one, I pray, oh God, that you will use me. A Palu Satia, a Quantazias, a Tuli Bicatusa, a Paracaton de Lebacusa, in the name of Jesus, Le Paraga Son Telebahias, Reco Pariba, Zatun de Lebahias, Reco Paria to Zebra Canisa, a Cuparian da Zebran de Lecusa, a Maracatusa, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Please listen to me. Listen to me. For the rest of the Sundays before the year end, it's going to be it's four Sundays of ending well. I'm starting today. Next week, when you are coming, if you have a you have a bottle of oil, you have an anointing oil, I want you to come with it. As we have finished praying and we have made declaration, you want to anoint yourself. That in these three Sundays left, may the Lord show you mercy. So after we finish next week, you want to anoint yourself and say, Lord, and I want you to bring God, we'll make declaration on it. We want to pray. And after we have finished, there's going to be a corporate anointing. You will open your own oil and anoint yourself. We we'll make declaration and we'll trust God that as you go through the week, may the Lord favor you. Miracle is, does not happen in years. It doesn't happen in months. It doesn't happen in days. Miracle happen within a moment. And we are saying that this fall weeks as we want to set aside for prayer and the word of God we are declaring that by the anointing that will seal our prayer 
every week we will have to record miracles every week we will record testimonies and i pray for you this week is the beginning of your miracle this week is the beginning of your miracle that as you start the week and you set yourself apart unto righteousness may the lord help you may that miracle you are seeking come quickly may that breakthrough you are seeking come quickly i don't hear a better amen at all i said i said may that miracle come quickly may that breakthrough come quickly in the name of jesus in these four sundays of anywhere may god send angels your way may they solve that challenge quickly may they solve that challenge quickly in the name of jesus thank you father lift up your hands everyone i want to pray for you i pray in the name of jesus that this week you will walk in righteousness this week you will seek the lord's business this week your desire for the things of god will grow stronger that through that desire, may the Lord send angels as your, as, your, as your help. May God send angels to come through for you. That they will become a help. They will lead you through the week. Any testimony you are believing God for this week, may the Lord give it to you. As you set yourself aside for his kingdom. In Jesus name. Amen. Put your hands together and take a seat. God bless you.